Greetings, my dear friends, and welcome back to my channel. This is Carrie Kanye bringing you the last quarter moon episode of Collective Awakening Weekly. This is a weekly energy update and activation to support your journey in spiritual awakening, healing, and empowerment. Each week, we take a look at the astrological transits and aspects that have a collective influence on all of us, in addition to me sharing channeled messages and sacred wisdom teachings through the tarot. Let's go ahead and dive in. Welcome back, guys, and welcome to Aries season. We are officially in spring. We had the spring equinox a few days ago on the 20th, and the sun also moved into Aries on the same day, which begins a brand new cycle of experience astrologically. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, so every time we come back around to Aries season, we're beginning a new cycle of experience in our lives as well, which exactly coincides with the energies of springtime time rebirth, renewal, new beginnings, and this is the season that we're all in right now. While the sun in Aries inspires fresh enthusiasms, fresh energies, new beginnings in alignment with what our deepest goals and dreams are, we do still have several planets in Pisces and several planets in Aquarius, which influences seasons, flavors, colors, that Aries sun energy. We still have Mercury, Neptune, and Jupiter in Pisces. Pisces is the sign that governs all things having to do with the unseen and mystical dimensions of life. It's also our creativity. It's the power of our dreams. So this brings in shamanic wisdom teachings around what we're dreaming into being right now. It also enables us to connect more deeply with higher guidance and our own silent knowledge. With Mars, Venus, and Saturn still in Aquarius, this lends itself to us all feeling a little bit tapped into an adventurous spirit within ourselves, and it inspires the visionary within. Mars in Aquarius is the archetype of the visionary, while Venus in Aquarius is a little more adventurous, a little bit more curious, a little bit more sociable, while Saturn in Aquarius revolutionizes the way we do things. So these are the primary energies that are influencing us all collectively right now. And knowing about these energies enables us to access them more consciously so that we can harness them in alignment with whatever our intentions are in the now. So while we are in Aries and it is an energy of bursting into fresh revitalization, rebirth, renewal, new journeys, new experiences, we also have to remember that this week, right now, we're in the waning phase of the moon. We're in the last quarter week of the moon in the sign of Capricorn. The last quarter phase of the lunar cycle each month is more of a time of releasing, letting go, clearing away. It's like a big exhale, like who in preparation for new beginnings next week when we have the new moon. So I'm gonna mention here that the Aries energy that we're tapping into now as we are in Aries season will kick more fully into action as we are coming into the last few days of March and the first few days of April because Mercury is moving into the sign of Aries, which joins the sun in Aries on March 27th. Mercury in Aries ignites awareness, ideas, sudden light bulbs of awareness is going off uh, that inspire a particular action, decision, or direction in our forward movement. At the same time, the next new moon that we have, which is going to be on April 1st, so we're going to talk more about it next week, is also in the sign of Aries. So Mercury moving into Aries, joining the sun that's already in Aries, and the new moon in Aries next week, which is the first new moon of spring, is really where we're going to have more of a tangible feeling of being inspired by that Aries energy, that sense of being motivated, compelled into our expansion, 
energized, empowered, enthused, and excited about the potentials and possibilities at our fingertips that we all have access to exploring, implementing, and manifesting now. Speaking of manifestation, on March 28th, we're coming into an exact conjunction between Venus and Saturn. This conjunction or alignment between these two planets more than likely will manifest as some form of tangible, manifested progress and or clarity around how we can achieve some type of manifested progress in alignment with whatever it is that you've personally been working towards manifesting. So in looking back over the past few months, it's been a time of cultivating a deeper sense of connection with our authentic soul nature, cultivating a deeper connection with our personal relationship with the unseen spiritual dimensions of life. And now as we're launching into Aries season, we're having opportunity to actually take action in alignment with whatever insights, awarenesses have come to us through the time that we've spent cultivating our spiritual connections with ourselves, And for those of us who really have been working on those inner spiritual development levels, this year can be a really rewarding year for you in regard to experiencing those manifested results in alignment with the goals that you have been striving for. Lastly, before we get into the cards, I also want to mention that over the course of the past few weeks, we have been having a lot of solar storm activity. Solar flares, which do impact the Earth's atmosphere, they, it affects things having to do with electromagnetic energies of the Earth and in our own person. We are electromagnetic energy beings. And so when we have a lot of solar storms and solar flare activity, it does impact us on nervous system levels, which can affect our moods. It can make us feel a little bit more sluggish, a little bit more tired, a little bit more edgy, a little bit more moody. Some people actually will get headaches and things like that. So just know that that's also been going on behind the scenes. If you've been feeling a little bit off along those lines, chances are it's because of the solar storm and solar flare activity that we've been having. So today I'm working with my Osho Zen Tarot. It's a really colorful, vibrant deck, which I really enjoy working with. And in alignment with the energies of the waning moon, the last quarter moon that we're in this week, we're gonna do a tarot spread that gives us insight as to how to best to work with the energies of the waning moon in addition to the other astrological influences that are happening this week. So I'm gonna start by choosing three cards. And in the spirit of the last quarter moon, we're gonna take a look at insights and messages around whatever's falling away for you in your life right now, insights and messages around whatever is establishing or balancing, and then insights and awarenesses around what's being carried forward into this first new moon of spring in the sign of Aries, which happens next week. And of course, we'll talk more about that then, but here we go. Let's go ahead and dive in here. And let me just spread these cards out and select three. I'm gonna go just like one at a time today. And the first card that we are pulling is gonna give us insights and messages around what's being released. And what turned over is the guidance card reversed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up right so that we can all take a peek at it. And as usual, I invite all of you to take a good look at the imagery and the card and notice what jumps out at you and using what jumps out at you personally as a special message for you individually. Now, looking at this card, we see that there's an angel here. It can be an angel. It's definitely a winged angelic figure or guide who is guiding a person here that maybe you can see that in the background who seems to be a little bit lost in the wilderness. They're sort of clinging on to the angel wings here, but, but looking back as if they're looking behind them, looking to see where they're coming from. 
now in the reverse position in alignment with what's being released. When I see the guidance card reversed, to me, it feels like what's being released is reluctance to trust our inner guidance. When this card shows up upright, it would indicate, okay, we are aligned, attuned, consciously asking for, receiving, and trusting higher guidance that's coming in. In the reverse position, it feels, again, to me that it's letting go of where we've been not trusting our guidance or ignoring our guidance. So this is what's being shed. This is what's being released, or this is what's good to allow yourself to clear away or release. Clearing away fears, reluctancies, uncertainties around trusting your inner guidance. And so what's the flip side of that message? It means that this is a really good time to cultivate your sense of confidence, strength in trusting your own personal inner guidance, your silent knowledge, trusting whatever guidance comes in from spirit. Now, one thing that I want to mention here that I meant to mention earlier and I didn't as we're talking about what's being released this week being the last quarter moon phase, the waning phase, as we're in the first few days of spring, this is actually the very best week of the spring season while we're in the first few days waning moon to do literal and energetic spring cleaning. So clearing out, releasing, you might literally want to do a deep clean of your home environment. For me, I'm still in the process of moving, so I'm purging, I'm getting rid of stuff, I'm giving it away, selling it, donating it. So I'm definitely doing deep levels of clearing, purging, releasing. It feels awesome. But when we do that, when we release the old, we're creating space for the new. We're creating space for fresh energies. So this can be literally within your home environment, your professional work environment. It can be within yourself as well. So on one level, releasing and clearing away any sense of reluctancy or avoidance of trusting your inner guidance. I know some of us out there have been battling this lately. We have an intuition, but we don't trust it. And I know it because I've been talking with you guys. So this is the week to really tune into your personal growth work, do the work that enables you to develop that confidence and certainty around your inner guidance. And if you need a helping hand, if you need a little boost of insider direction, then check out the Decoding Intuition playlist here on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it up here so that you can check it out or up here, whatever way it is. Um, but on that playlist, I give all kinds of fundamental practices and insights that you can do to begin strengthening your intuition. Now let's take a look at what's balancing or what's anchoring in. Creativity. Take a look at the card. See what aspect of it jumps out at you. I'm noticing that it's assigned to the number three in Roman numerals here. And when I look at this guidance card that came in, it's also a three. So we have a theme around three. Numerology wise, three is an indicator of witnessing or experiencing the first signs of fruitfulness or fruition based on what our intentions and efforts have been. So we can look at it this way. If the number one would be a seed, two would be the plant, and three would be the fruit. So obviously we're in springtime, everything's in full growth mode right now, full flourishing. We're at the beginning of a deeply flourishing cycle in nature and we of course are attuned and connected to that and we have our own flourishing so we have to remember that we are in a time where the natural cycles of nature are supporting us all and in coming into our full fruition our full highest and best expression and as a part of that 
is creative expression. Now, this creativity is very connected to that Pisces energy that we have prominent really throughout the entire year with different planets coming in and out of Pisces, but especially Neptune and Jupiter, both of which are co-rulers of Pisces. So you can also see here, there's a lot of colors. There's a woman with stars around her head like a crown of stars she's reaching up towards the moon and so take a look to see what aspect of this card is jumping out at you it looks like there's also water flowing down here there's spirals there's a lotus this is a, a lotus which represents illumination and enlightenment so we can tap into creative inspiration within ourselves as we reach towards, again, our spiritual nature, as I've been talking about. So the stars on her crown represent her conscious attunement to cosmic consciousness. The moon represents her connection with her intuition. And it's through her connection to her intuition and cosmic awareness that she's able to rise above into illumination, which is what the lotus indicates. The water is about going with the flow of life, trusting the flow of life. It also represents the deep unconscious mind. And so on one level, I would recommend checking in with yourself and feeling into What's been really calling to me on those those deep, silent, knowing levels? What are my true, true ambitions right now? My true, true um, passions, enthusiasm? What's driving me and compelling me forward in life? And align your personal creativity in the direction of that. So that's what's establishing, anchoring, or balancing is our connection with our creativity. This is a really good week to explore that and to discover how it might be that you feel guided to express your own unique creative soul gifts through you right now in ways that are connected to what your personal growth goals are or your goals in life in general. Last card we're gonna look at is what's being carried forward. What's being carried forward here? What's being carried forward into the new moon phase? Harmony. This card came up a while ago because I remember talking about it. And it's assigned to the number 10, which would make it a one in numerology, which is new beginnings. But in the tarot, when a 10 comes up, it also indicates sort of an integration period that happens when we are bringing one cycle of experience to completion and a new cycle opening up for us, which we're certainly doing now that we're completed with winter and we're shifting into spring and all of the energies that are connected with that. So what's being carried forward into the new moon cycle that happens next week on April 1st, and that's when I'll put out the next video, is harmony, flow state, mind, body, soul, harmony. You can see that there's like an illumination around the figure's heart chakra that seems to be flowing back up into the third eye chakra. And this card very much is about being in your flow state, meaning mind, body, spirit, harmony, mind, body, spirit, um, cohesion, so to speak. And really, this is the space that we need to be in in order to experience a harmonized reality. We experience harmony in our life when we are living in harmony within ourselves. So this would be a really good week to check with yourself and ask yourself, where am I feeling discord? Some of us might be feeling discord because of those solar flares that are happening. Ask yourself what's coming up for me, what's contributing to discord, how can I show up for myself in my self-love and in my self-care to 
honor whatever that is and bring it into alignment so that I can flow forward into this very potent, powerful time of fresh, new beginnings, rebirth, renewal energy that we're in right now. However it is that you choose to focus your intention, your attention, and your energy right now is actually setting the pace and the vibe for the entire year ahead. The seeds that we plant now with our heart's intentions are what's going to be flowing forward and manifesting throughout the year ahead, whether we're doing that consciously or unconsciously. So if you can do it consciously, that's going to enable you to have the most fulfilling, rewarding results and effects of the energies that are happening right now. So I'll leave you all with that today. Much love. Love all you guys. Blessings. Namaste. And I will see you in the next video. I still have about two more weeks here at my current home. And pretty soon you'll be seeing me in a brand new studio setup at my new place. So I'm super excited for that. Anyway, I will see you guys in the new moon episode of Collective Awakening Weekly next week. Blessings, guys. All my love.